Please turn your Bibles with me to the book of Revelation, the chapter 4, and let us read verse 5. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderclaps and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Amen. Look at this scripture. Here you will find two words that outlines what our theme is all about. Firstly, you hear fire. Secondly, you hear the word, the seven spirits of God, which is the Holy Spirit. So you have Holy Spirit and fire. The Holy Spirit quite often manifests himself as light and fire. No, the Holy Spirit has many, many different, different forms. He is not limited to one particular form. For example, God the Father has a form like a man. The Lord Jesus Christ manifested like a man and has a form like a man. But the Holy Spirit is not limited to, to the form of like a man. He is limitless. He appears like a wind. He appears like rivers of living waters. He appears like fire. He appears like a dove. He has no form, just like a wind. However, he will take on a form to explain himself or manifest his attributes, the incommunicable attributes which cannot be communicated. He takes on a form to make them communicable. For example, when the Bible tells us in John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39, that the Holy Spirit is like rivers of living waters, that explains about his life-giving nature. In the year 1994, I was writing my second book, now called into his likeness. Originally, the title was called Maturing Unto Perfection. When I was writing that book, I came to the middle of the book and I was going to write about the importance of speaking in tongues. And I started writing the first paragraph. Then I stopped because that's all there is that needs to be explained in the first paragraph. However, I felt in my spirit there was something more about not just what is tongues but the true spirit, the purpose, the origination of tongues itself, why it is of great importance to speak in tongues, why God himself the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that he speaks in a stammering tongue and in another tongue to the people. So God also speaks in a different kinds of tongues. Then you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 that even the angels of God, they have their own language, not just one language, you know. The Bible says the languages of angels. So, which means, even among themselves, they are different, different languages. Possibly, probably, I don't say this is it. Probably, you know, it's just my guess. Someday it may be either proven correct or maybe so. Probably the cherubim have their own language. Probably the seraphim, they have their own language. Or the high-ranking holy ones, they have their own language. The warrior angels, the messenger angels, the worship angels, there are so many different, different kinds of other angels. Probably they all have their own languages. You know, there are some angels who are in charge of galaxies, of different, different star systems, of different planets in other worlds. They are in charge like a governor overseeing the entire planet. You know, originally, Lucifer 
was in charge of planet earth this was eons ago eons ago we will not go into that mystery right now that is a totally different subject but before he fell angels of god are in charge of different different planets and there they have different different languages to communicate with the beings that are there so so many different different languages so i put down my pen and i knelt down and i prayed say lord i know there is something far deeper concerning this subject of tongues i cannot go on if you don't teach me so please teach me i as i was praying i felt somebody was standing beside me and i opened my eyes and turned to my right and there i saw at least about 6 or 7 feet tall just a wall of waters just a wall of water in the form of a man and the water seems to be flowing in and out have you seen the, all those little fountains that you keep in your homes where the water flows out and then it gets recycled it comes back again now you don't know where the water is coming and where the water is going right just like that when i saw this rivers of living waters it was coming down and then it's coming going up and coming down again and as i saw that i perceive in my spirit this is the holy spirit that i'm seeing like the rivers of living waters that is flowing then he spoke to me and in one split second showed me from the book of genesis all the way up to the book of revelation concerning the signs of speaking in tongues not signs as if s i g n but the signs like scientific signs the signs of speaking in tongues which i wrote in my book in great detail why it is vitally important for every born again spirit filled christian to speak in unknown tongues so the holy spirit takes on many many different forms one of the most famous form that we all are very familiar with is him taking the form like a dove which you read in matthew chapter 3 verse 16 so the holy spirit takes on many many different forms but now specifically we want to see how he takes on the form of as light and fire let me give you a few scriptures in the bible few examples how we see the holy spirit like that firstly he appears like wind and fire that is the holy spirit's form like wind and fire in acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4 you read on the day of pentecost when the disciples were all were gathered in one place waiting for the outpouring of the holy spirit and when that moment came the holy spirit came like a mighty rushing wind a wind swept into that prayer room the upper room and not only the wind came but there appeared fire like tongues flames of fire came and rested upon every one of the 120 disciples as the fires came and set upon them they all were baptized not only with the holy spirit but also with fire and they began to speak in unknown tongues there you see wind the holy spirit and fire secondly in the old testament days when the children of israel came out of egypt and were walking towards the promised land how did god appear to them through his holy spirit he appeared like a cloud of pillar and of fire a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire that is the holy spirit's manifestation his form like cloud and like fire in exodus chapter 13 and the verse 21 all during the 40 years of journey in the wilderness 
you know if you sit down in a quiet place and meditate on this try to imagine in your mind this huge pillar of cloud every one of the israelites at least 6 million of them saw with their naked eyes the manifestation of the god of israel like a cloud that is in the day time and in the night time it was a huge torch of light fire no what an awesome awesome experience it must have been it's not a small pillar you know a gigantic huge pillar it was big enough to cover 6 million people from the scorching sun see how good is god's great kindness you know all throughout the wilderness he thought in his heart my poor people have to walk in the wilderness and the sun is going to beat on them so let me give them a covering so all as soon as the sun comes up his manifestation like a cloud hovers over them 6 million people you know for 6 million people to be covered by the cloud can you imagine how huge must be the cloud what a vast area it must cover it's not an ordinary cloud because wherever they move or rather the cloud moved they moved and then in the night time they need light in the wilderness right see in those days they don't have electricity no street lights so god appeared like a huge pillar of fire to give light not only light but also warm warm in the cold you know cold comes in the desert nights see how great good god is if he can do that for 6 million people what about you amen that same god of israel is still alive he is still with us and he will still even today he will be with us for us like a pillar of cloud and like a pillar of fire you know in this spirit of time that we are living it's not going to be business as usual anymore the believers and the church are going to be led by the spirit of god in a manner in which there is no precedent in church history there is no precedent in biblical history so to what are you going to compare for a reference or a precedent that is why it is very very important to be filled with the holy spirit only the holy spirit can guide us into all truth if you start looking for precedent or a reference anywhere in the bible you will not find it and because you will not find it you are going to think oh because it is not written in the bible therefore this thing is not of god and when you come to that conclusion you are going to miss the boat when the holy ghost comes next it will not just be a rain it will be the former rain and the latter rain put together like a huge perfect storm huge tempest storm the gathering of the winds from the four corners of the earth coming together as a mighty storm a perfect storm a tempest that will blow upon the face of the earth like never before in the entire church history not only church history from the very foundation of this world till now the world has never seen the holy spirit like that the powers of the age to come 
world be revealed in these days. You know, when the Holy Ghost comes like that, you will have no precedent. You will have no reference to look back and ask, where is it written in the Bible? You will have to write Acts chapter 29. They, the angels of God will be in our midst to write Acts chapter 29, chapter 30, 31, 32. They will keep on writing one by one. We must prepare our hearts. I am not saying anything to tickle you, to make you joyful. I am telling you what is going to come to pass. And the reason why I say this to you is because so that we can prepare ourselves to get wet in the rain. When that comes, you must throw away all your umbrellas. You know what is the umbrella? Your religious concepts. Your box up mentality that this is how God should work and nothing beyond that. You, if you have this kind of mindset then when the rains comes you are going to hold the umbrella because you are going to think that this is not of God. So you'll put up your umbrella. But your holding the umbrella is not going to prevent the rains from coming. The rain will still come. Only one big difference. You won't get wet. But those who are willing, they will jump into the rain and dance in the rain. Have you danced in the rain? You have? If you have not, start practicing. <laughs> My dearly beloved brothers and sisters, the hold of heaven and all the angelic beings have been anxiously waiting for such a time as this. Two great events that every being in heaven are looking forward to. Two great events. One is the outpouring of the perfect storm of the Holy Spirit. When the church will rise up like an exceedingly great and mighty army that will take back that which Adam had lost. And she will walk in the power that Adam was intended to walk originally. The powers of the age to come, it will be given to the overcoming church. Not just church per se. We have to qualify that statement, you know. Not church per se. The larger church, but the overcomers. The overcomers, not everybody. You can live a life like the foolish virgin or you can live the life like an overcoming wise virgin. The choice is always yours. God will never, never force us to make a choice. He said, I lay before you two parts. He that is filthy, let him continue to be filthy. The Holy Spirit will stop nudging you. He that is righteous, let him continue to be righteous. See, that is very, very scary, you know. If you read the scripture in Revelation chapter 22, verses 11 and 12, the scripture does not say, He that is filthy, amend your ways, turn back from your wicked ways. It does not say like that. He said, let it be. If that's what you want, let it be. Very, very dangerous. Because it means the Holy Spirit has stopped his work of conviction. Yes, stop it. 
See, it says very clearly in Genesis chapter 6, My spirit shall not strive with men forever. So there is a time, a time limit that the spirit will strive and then he will stop. He won't go on beyond that. So the Holy Spirit manifests like a pillar of cloud and pillar of fire. Thirdly, the Holy Spirit also manifests like lights and colors. Very, very amazingly. Lights and colors. If you read in Leviticus chapter 8 verse 8, when God gave Moses the order of making the priestly garments, he told that the high priest garments should have two special stones called the Urim and Tumim. And the word Urim and Tumim in the Hebrew language conveys the concept lights and colors. Now what are they? One stone is in green color, the other stone is in red color. When the high priest goes before the Ark of the Covenant to seek the will of God, to know what is God's will, when he stands there, the two stones, if it is the will of God, then the stone that is green will begin to blink and light up. If it is not the will of God, then the red stone will blink and light up. So that's what it is, Urim and Tumim, signifying lights and colors. In Ezra chapter 2 verse 63, you will read that the priests and the prophets used to consult God using the Urim and Tumim, lights and colors. If we read Revelation chapter 4 verse 3 and Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 28, you will find above the throne of God. The apostle John and the prophet Ezekiel saw a rainbow. Now not just an ordinary rainbow like that we see that appears today in the sky after a rainy day, but the rainbow that appears above the throne of God is not just a rainbow but the rainbow is filled with bright glory light and it is alive how to describe that brother Johnson the things that are in heaven you know very very strangely when you look at them you will see life for example you see this dry artificial plants when you look at them Sometimes they look real. From far they look very, very real. Or even if you go out in the park, you see the grasses, you see the leaves, you see the flowers, different, different colors. There is a park in India, a place called Uti. There are many, many, many colors of roses. So many colors of roses. You would have never imagined there are so many colors of roses in God's creation. So every year in the summer, they used to have a rose festival. So during that time when all the roses bloom in their full glory, like a well make up woman. People from all over the world, they come there to see the beauty of the roses. However, if you look at the flowers that are on this earth, you look at them, they don't appear alive. But in heaven, when you look at things, they are different. They seem to be alive. And I was pondering so much this afternoon, how to explain you that. Unless your spiritual eyes see, the things that are in heaven, you will not understand what I am trying to communicate. Of course, you will believe because you are wonderful saints. Don't you? Do you believe? But just believing is not good enough until your eyes see them. Then you will know, oh, this is what he meant. They are alive. So the best that I can 
describe to you is this everything that is on earth that is life but that is a soulish life something is dead there's no life there something is dead where else in heaven where the true pure life is the zoe life z o e zoe the zoe life means is life life real life the life that we now live is a soulish life is like artificial life when we sin in adam god said the day that you sin you shall surely die that zoe life died that which makes us alive unto god died so we don't appear alive we live we have our breath but we are not alive everything in heaven from the tiniest grass right up to the trees the fruits everything the raw waters the light the rainbow they all appear to be living and breathing and having a moving within them that is the zoe life in fact john chapter 10 verse 10 the lord jesus said i have come that you may have life the first life the lord jesus said in the greek meant zoe life and then the second one my more abundant life is the life that we live in our in this world to be well and complete lacking nothing so within us there is this potential to break out into the zoe life the day that you allow that zoe life to break out this gets interesting that's the day that's the day you have overcome death you have overcome death and you will not die this is what the lord jesus meant when he said he that believeth in me shall not die it is possible you know to walk in that realm where you overcome death and you live on this earth and you will continue to live till the coming of the lord jesus without tasting death you have overcome that barrier you have overcome that barrier it is possible absolutely possible that seed that zoe seed is already planted inside you the very moment you accepted the lord jesus christ as your savior that very moment that seed has been planted now this seed unlike natural seeds natural seeds they just remain as seeds they don't die they can remain for a long 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 time but there is a life within that seed that life can either come forth or it dies now let me give you a very very simple illustration which all of my dearly beloved sisters will understand very much now when a woman goes through menstruation period the seed comes out the ovule making her ready to become pregnant am i correct now when she doesn't become pregnant that live seed cannot remain there anymore it is flushed out right either the life breaks forth and becomes alive or it is flushed out in the same way the zoe seed that is planted inside you you must water them you must nurture them and cause it to break out you must cause it to break out first peter chapter 1 verse 23 that seed must break and when the seed breaks then the zoe life will begin to come out from you 
Now, when the Zoe life comes out of you, now then it needs to go through some process. First, the Zoe life must fill your spirit. Your spirit must be full of the Zoe life. That's the first stage. Then the second stage, it must, from the spirit, it must break out into your soul. Then your soul must be full of the Zoe life. When your soul becomes full of the Zoe life, you will begin to walk in the realm where nothing is impossible. Your mind will believe that all things are possible. It will never entertain an ounce of doubt because the mind has been renewed and transformed when the Zoe life breaks out into your mind. That's the second stage. Now comes the third stage. This flesh must be full of the Zoe life. When this flesh becomes full of the Zoe life, then you are translated from death to life. Then you overcome death. Then you attain the status that which is called in the Bible the manifested sons and daughters of God. Then you are walking. Now I dare to say this. Then you are walking on this earth like how exactly the Lord Jesus walked. Exactly like the Lord Jesus walked. Or rather, let me state it more clearly. You will walk on this earth as how Adam was originally made to walk. Read Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. There it says, God gave him dominion over all that flies in the air. Which means he had power, authority over the physical laws of the air. Now a bird flies, so could Adam. Have you heard of this term called levitation? Is it a bad word? Is it a bad word? Is it a new agey word? No. What word is it? If it's not bad word, it's not new agey word, what word is it then? A Christian word. Let me give you two biblical examples for that. In Acts chapter 1, verse 9 and 10 you read that as the Lord Jesus was speaking with the disciples, he was levitated, taken up, right? There you go. And in Revelation chapter 11, you'll read that after the two witnesses were killed and on the third day they were resurrected to life, as they were standing up and looking at everyone, they were levitated, taken up into the sky. There you are, your witness number two. And in Acts chapter 8, then you read that Philip was carried by the Spirit. Levitated, right? Right? So is it a bad word? No, it's a Christian word. So power over the air. Secondly, Adam had power and authority and dominion over everything that crept on the earth, which meant he had power and authority and dominion over everything on the land. Everything on the land. He had that power and that authority. Thirdly, he had power and authority and dominion over all things in the seas, in the waters, which meant that he could have walked on the water like how the Lord Jesus Christ walked on the water. He had power over the water. The water is water because you think it is water. 
right you think oh water i'm afraid i'll sink because you believe what you think so shall it be you ask for it you know let me give you one very good example when the disciples saw the lord jesus walking on the water peter said lord if it be you call me to come so the lord said come peter and peter stepped walking on the water with the authority of the word of god as he was walking the bible tells us he stopped believing and started looking on the water and suddenly he realized hey it's water how could it hold me the moment he allowed his mind to think like that he began to sink my dearly beloved brothers and sisters this is the powers of the age to come it is going to come god is going to give so the rainbow on the throne of god it appears alive its lights and colors these are the various forms of the holy spirit who comes like spirit like light and fire now the holy spirit comes with fire what is the purpose for what purpose malachi chapter 3 verses 2 and 3 tells us that before the great and terrible day of the lord the coming of the lord jesus christ the holy spirit will begin to purify to make cleanse the believers if you read malachi chapter 3 verses 2 and 3 it says like this but who may abide the day of his coming who shall stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap and he shall sit like a refiner and purifier of silver and he shall purify the sons of levi and purge them like gold and silver that they may offer unto the lord an offering in righteousness two fold work of the holy spirit and fire one it refines us now the hebrew word for the word refiner is sarap t s a r a p h and the word sarap means to purge to melt to make pure that's what the word refining means and the word fuller soap in hebrew is kabak k a b a c and the word kabak is very very interesting it is like this but it is very very difficult for the western world to understand that because you do not know what it means to wash clothes with your hands do you you don't right some of you do when you have an electrical failure but most other times you just dump them into the machine that does all the washing for you but in the olden days even in india they still practice that there are some people group whose profession from their childhood that's their way their life is they are the washermen you know they pick all the clothes from all the various homes they bring them by the river bank and there they soak them in the river bank and they use a kind of soap and then what they'll do is they'll stamp on the clothes have you seen that okay those of you are staring at me with a queer look please come to india they'll stamp them or they jump on them the jump on them the force of the jump will stamp away at, at least they believe that all the dirt oh they'll take the clothes and just beat on a rock and those beating scares away all the dirt <laughs> that's <laughs> what the 